So, well, thank you, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, I think uh, it's first meetup in Montreal for snowplow, uh, maybe first in Canada. First in Canada, all right. And then I guess next week in Toronto. Uh, awesome. So, um, uh, I, I, we, we didn't have time, a lot of uh, time to coordinate, but I think I, I wanted to balance out the fact that a lot of my colleagues uh, presented uh, today uh, were highly technical, but highly like engineering, another one is analytics. I wanted to bring in a little bit of balance into that. Uh, a balance to bring in a little bit of more of a strategy behind this, strategy behind the data. I wanted to give a little bit of a talk uh, that's a little, uh, more on the inspiration side. So, uh, um, so yeah. So, with, with, so, so. Well, thank you for attending, and thank you, La Presse, for hosting us. I hope next time uh, we'll be able to host this at our office <laughs> at Adviso. Uh, and, uh, and there's going to be uh, uh, even more talks about uh, snowplow analytics. So let me tell you about the new data-driven world. And before uh, I start, let me give you a quick introduction. Introduction about Adviso. Adviso is a Montreal, uh, uh, a Montreal firm. Uh, we're um, we're uh, um, 15 years now, um, almost 16. And, um, growing to 80, 85 uh, uh, specialists. So um, we're specialized in um, digital marketing services, uh, managed services, but also uh, in consulting. That's our core. Uh, and um, we like to say that we're proud to say that we're privately owned. So we're independent and we work with uh, a few uh, partners like Snowplow. Uh, and uh, that allows us to have that you know, vendor agnostic approach where we select the right uh, vendor for our customers. So uh, a little bit about myself. I'm a, uh, I'm a consultant at uh, Viso. I started as a developer. Um, it's been a while now. And uh, not to say what, what's my age, but uh, my uh, beard shows a little bit of uh, what it could, <laughs> could look like. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've been uh, in, in uh, tech marketing uh, more like analytics uh, 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 in uh, data engineering as well. So um, I had the chance to see uh, the, the industry evolve. So uh, it um, all started uh, my experience with uh, a good evangelist that came to Montreal almost 10 plus years ago, um, Avinash Koshik. Who knows Avinash? Yeah? So. <laughs> In the back, so I put a big picture of Avinash here and just to <laughs> make you remember this guy. I, I don't know what he's doing nowadays, so we don't hear about him too much anymore. But I remember his model back in 2009 with his Web Analytics 2.0, where he presented the uh, the what, how, much, why, and what else to get the golden nugget or the OBBS, oh, uh, as he says it. Uh, I liked his way of presenting uh, analytics, vol uh, giving a little bit of uh, explanations, clarifications on this industry that is very, very complex, uh, that is hard to uh, to, um, to 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 get to. Uh, so um, it allowed me to grow into this uh, field and uh, meet uh, some, ex you know, meet that um, uh, well, meet some great people and also some business folks that had no data-driven uh, approach. So uh, just like this uh, <laughs> cartoon uh, says, uh, nowadays we're pretty much all aligned with data-driven approaches and we're basing our decisions on data. So this is a big change in culture. And all the way up, up until uh, last year, there was uh, another talk that inspired me that I want to share with you. Uh, one of my colleagues, Stefan Amel, and uh, up until lately, uh, a competitor, but he's not anymore. <laughs> so I can talk to, about his approach uh, pretty freely. Um, so his, his, his approach, Radical Analytics, just brought in uh, this, this mix of, uh, well, digital analytics is kind of dead. So it made room for analytics, the real analytics uh, that you heard with Romain that is being implemented at La Presse, that you will hear with uh, another colleague uh, uh, um, from Duproprio Pierre. And uh, they're, they're embracing this new technology as well as um, 
uh, more on, on, on the business side, bringing in these different approaches. So like uh, Lean Six, Six Sigma to be able to, uh, um, so the DMAIC approach um, that is uh, very uh, standard and pretty understandable by anybody in the company that is um, uh, that has an MBA, I guess. Uh, <laughs> maybe not here. Um, and uh, that, it, in essence, we are, uh, we are agents of change and uh, we bring in that change in the company and we should not wait for executives to dictate uh, what we should do. So um, I would recommend to see his talk at Super Week, uh, another conference that is uh, pretty interesting in, uh, in, in Europe. Um, but that all made me think about um, you know, all the challenges that are coming in into our world um, with, with regards to data management. and. Um, Today and tomorrow, I think we're really focusing uh, a lot of our efforts on um, some of these challenges, so, so like data privacy. And I like this quote from Mary uh, Meeker that is uh, mentioning that scrutiny is rising on both sides, user, business, regulators, technology-driven trends are changing so rapidly that it's rare when, that it, that it's rare when one side fully understands what the other is doing. And I think that's what happened earlier, I think, when we were presented by the advancements in analytics that was uh, being shown by La Presse and uh, how it's, it's uh, it, it, you know, translated into a presentation like this one. Um, so it's setting the stage for reactions that can have unintended consequences, obviously. So what, what happened is that some people in Europe started dictating by putting a law on privacy. So everybody knows about GDPR. And if you don't, we have a good article on uh, our blog uh, clarifying some of the bigger concepts, so I invite you to read that. Uh, the slides are going to be available after, so if you want uh, to, 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 to follow these links, they're going to be available. It brought in that general awareness. Everybody's passionate about data, but passionate to the point that they realize that there is scandals left and right since then. So pretty much all scandals that have been coming in are pretty similar. They're all about you know, privacy breach. So um, I think all the, th this, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, this, this interest with, with privacy uh, is, is a little bit curious, um, if you ask me, but uh, because we've all read those terms and conditions, right? So we know what they're doing with our data. But, um, but in reality, um, what we really seek is not uh, a, a, a privacy, it's really an experience. And one of, our, um, um, one of our partners actually talks about, you know, that experience and really focuses on, on, on experiences and says that people used to, to look for products. They used to look for a really in, in, uh, a defining product that they're, they're, that's different than their the other vendors. But in reality, now, we're looking for experiences. Um, experiences in, uh, you know, delightful experiences. So, um, I think we all agree with that statement. Eight out of 10 are really looking for that, uh, for, for that delightful experience. Um, they're looking for those brands that are, uh, like, you know, bigger brands, I'm not gonna mention them, but uh, <coughs> essentially, uh, they're, they're all, you know, they're trying to focus on that. They're trying to improve those, 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 they're listening to the customers and they're trying to improve on that. And if you, if you think about it um, in numbers, it really looks like 80% personalized through email, 62 through social channels, 51% person, personalized on mobile devices, but only 38% personalized across all touch ones. It, uh, it's, it's also 96% of consumers receive Ill irrelevant ads or promotions. 94 state they would discontinue the relationship with the brand because of this. And half of the brands use real-time interactions and co contextual data for personalization. So, like Wally here, or Waldo, or I don't know, what do you, what do you call it in French, but he, we, we sometimes find it creepy that they're following us everywhere, right? These ads, they're, 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 they're really not tailored for us. Um, so instead of um, sending shoe ads that we don't really want to see, we probably want to get experiences that are powered by the data. 
data that is cross-channel, data that is real-time, kind of like the data that we can get with like, the vendors like Snowplow. Um, so um, another point that I, that I uh, want to point out is uh, Forrester gave us this, this uh, report. Um, we've forgotten about the user on the other side of the screen, right? So what got us there? Well, we're thinking about a direct response uh, kind of approach. We're relying on technology for hyper-targeting, uh, hyper so just showing too many, too many impressions of our ads or too many emails that are irrelevant, or just talking to a customer that we're calling him for, for, for a product that he already bought. And hyper-personalization, kind of creepy, right? Sometimes it's these ads, how do they know these things? So hopefully they, 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 should, they should learn from that. And obviously the siloed, siloed structures that are really annoying. So what we can do, uh, if, we want to if we want to overcome these challenges, we must really adapt our ways. Um, let me give you a little bit of advice. So it's not about in-housing all your uh, data uh, control it's, uh, or your operations. It's really about controlling these operations. So I've seen many, many companies are talking about internalization, but it's really about control that you need to focus. Um, here are guiding principles. First of all, own your data. Don't, don't give it away. Own it. House it in your technology. Um, being, ask for transparency, to transparency to the cost of all the services that you're getting. Um, get the contracts in-house. Um, be, you know, be responsible about what is the success factors in your, in your projects. And um, make sure that, you know, Data-driven is at really the, at the core of these projects. And, and, and again, clear external roles and responsibilities if you're going to work with partners. And make sure that privacy is by design. So privacy is at the center of your solution, your program. And make sure you continuously use specialized partners. So that's kind of like my, my little pitch here. But uh, <laughs> let me tell you about a, a little, uh, another uh, golden nugget that I, that I found in my research, uh, the McKinsey research about um, the analytics translator. I think some of you are really thinking about getting into the field of analytics or just expanding into another role. Well, let me tell you about a new role that is, there, there's gonna be in an organization. A role that's gonna be between the business skill, the technology skill, the analytics skill, and I think so far we know what is data engineering is. Romain showed us what that means. A data architect, visualization analysts, I think some of you are here. Data scientists, again, uh, from Jeffrey's team. But there's two more in the intelligence hubs. Analytics translators and workflow integrators. So the translators are really the accelerators of the of, of, of data, and they are the ones that are gonna be bringing that data to a usefulness. So if you want to remember uh, a few takeaways from my talk to this morning, uh, this evening, yeah. <laughs> I'm still on morning time, right? Been traveling a lot. <laughs> so uh, look forward, change is already here, so don't settle for the old ways of analyzing, analyzing data. Uh, focus on your customer experience and data that powers it, and it's all about controlling, control. And make sure you have the right people for the job. So thank you. If you have any questions, I'm here. Okay, well first, if you've just started in the field and you're still you know, at university or learning a new skill, uh, maybe ask yourself which, which focus you're in, right? Are you more on the business side? Are you more on the technology side, like you know, developer or architect? Or are you more on the analytics skills, like, an, uh, like my colleague Pierre, or somebody that's more on the statistical side? So it's really a question of seeing yourself in, this, in, this, in these different uh, areas. What really talks to you best? Um, 
In my case, I, I started off as a developer, so it was pretty easy for me to to, to grow into this model uh, and then you know get into get a good spot there. Uh, but quickly, I, I, I realized that you need the business skills into that, so I, I had to to get like a master's degree in, in, in uh, yeah, e-commerce or in MBA would be a, would be a, a good way to go. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. That's okay. Great. All right. Great. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, do you start implementing Snowplow in your website? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, Snowplow is super easy to implement. Okay. Uh, there is the help of Snowplow Analytics team. Uh, it is a Snowplow. Uh, is it, it is an open source uh, uh, code that's, that's available online. But um, if you want to leverage the support team and the managed services from Snowplow Analytics in in, in, in UK, it's really it's really uh, pretty easy. Do they have an office in Montreal? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, great. Great. Okay. Well, I'm here around, so if you need to ask me a question, I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you.